Hello Hooligans, we are here in Showsley Farm in the UK looking at soil health. We are partnering with a company called Soil Heroes. These guys are fantastic. They are trying to improve soil through regenerative farming. And we are supporting a farm in the UK called Showsley Farm. It's a father and son team, Carl and Fred, really top guys, really chuffed to be working with them. Why fields have the names they have, they've always got funny names, but you know, you inherit the names from somebody else. This is called Paul's Ground. Uh, and this is, this is Huell's field. Okay. Oh, uh, so the margins you see around the outside here will be replanted in September uh, with this wildflower pollinator mix I'm talking about. So you see we have our six meter perimeters all the way around the outside of the field. How big is the Huel field? I think it's 33 hectares in that area. So this field is actually called Paul's Ground. We'd love to rename it Huel's Ground, but we'll work on that. This is actually barley, and this, all the barley you can see here is a field which is being sponsored by Huel to improve the regenerative agriculture. The thing I thought was kind of cool is if you, so we, we talk about global warming and it gets worse and worse and the population's 7 billion growing to 10 billion. 7.6 is 7 .6, it? 7.6, and, and, and like how do you fix that? But actually soil is quite magical or plants are quite magical. If you can get enough of the right plants growing, they can sequester carbon into the ground that can actually limit global warming and help us with the 1.5 degrees target. And more than that, with the some of the forms of agriculture at the moment, the way the soil is treated means that the carbon is being released into the atmosphere. So not only are you stopping it being released, you're actually pulling more down into it by using regenerative agriculture. So it's a double whammy effect. The effects of, um, of soil are one of many strategies that we as a global population can be doing to fight carbon emissions and greenhouse gas emissions. And no, no one really talks about it, right? No one talks about soil. No. Um, and very few people don't. talk about regenerative look, agriculture. Look, I've got, you know, i am been really trying to get acquainted in the last few years with the whole sustainability and the science behind it. And I've, I've got reasonably good knowledge on the, the greenhouse gas side of things. The regenerative agriculture is new to me. I've learned so much in the last few weeks when I knew who I was coming here today. I thought I'd better get a bit behind it. And I've got so much more to learn. I've learned loads today. And you're right, James, people don't talk about soil enough. And there's, there's a lot, lot to be heard. We should be doing more. Look at this, what is this? This must be a UFO. <coughs> is that like a crop circle? Yeah. Yeah. Spaceships landed in Huel Field. We don't want aliens in Huel's Field. Do we? Uh, that will be uh, actually just be rain. Rain? Uh, yeah. Well, rain. Oh. No rain. aliens, just rain. So one of the things we've learned is that the whilst the top layer of soil might look good, it's the bottom layers that might be really compacted. And unless you're getting more air and water into them, that won't improve. So it's about rotating to other types of crops with really deep roots like alfalfa. And that's what the guy's going to do here too. It's kind of funny, isn't it? When you when you get told about soil and soil health, you just start looking at it all the time. Go, okay, well, I wonder if that's good soil or bad soil. Do you have any farm jokes for us, James? Um, oh, now you put me on the spot. My ad lib comic routine isn't up what it used to be. <laughs> I used to, used to be a stand up comic, did you know that? Oh, what did surprise me yeah, is the size of the, the field that you were sponsoring. Me too, me too. That, that was a surprise. Did you successfully identify any crops? Barley. Barley. <laughs> um, sheep. <laughs> and bees. Did you get stung? No, I didn't. Did you get close enough to get stung? No, no I saw one on a ran. Yeah, I feel really proud that we're helping something that's quite obvious, but isn't talked about enough. And I think even just for our team to know more about regenerative farming and soil health, and we can start to push it more, we'll talk about it widely. And I, I, can't, I can't see any major reason why people aren't converting to Regenerative, other than the potential financial issues of what if it goes wrong and the, the sort of negative scenario. And, and, and I think maybe lack of knowledge. And the short term, it can be costly, but the long term isn't that long term, it's a few years, and they, it could be more productive. <coughs> As you can see, I'm now working in a new field. Get off my land. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, 